I just want to to pick out some very simple thoughts from the gospel here today and share them with you now the first thought don't miss this Jesus cares for the sick Jesus cares for the sick it's such a simple point it's so easy to forget here is the Son of God the Saviour of the world and he comes to an individual a blind man and he shows him compassion concern love and care he doesn't dismiss him he doesn't walk by he doesn't say it's just your fault he doesn't spiritualize this and say don't worry you'll be happy in heaven one day as if suffering doesn't matter Jesus cares for the sick and just for us to, to remember as Christians that this is a hallmark of Christianity. Of course it doesn't mean Christians are the only people who care for the sick. But it has been absolutely central to Christian identity for 2,000 years. And Christians have been at the centre of so much health care provision and revolutions in health care provision over many different centuries. Now look, I have to be careful telling this story. I know lots of you are from UCL, lots of you are at UCLH at the hospital here. You're very loyal to the place, and so am I. My mum and dad met there when they were students. I was born there, up the road, in the old maternity department. So UCLH is very special. But it's very recent, isn't it? Yeah? It's less than 200 years old. What's the oldest hospital in London? Barts, St Bartholomew's. And the foundation of St Bartholomew's, this is my point, it was founded by a Christian monk, priest, Rahair, in 1123. Sorry, UCL. Yeah. 1123. A canon of St Paul's Cathedral who went on pilgrimage to Rome, got very sick, very, very sick, and made a promise to God that if he recovered he would come back to London and set up a hospice, a hospital for the poor sick of the city. And inspired by the hospital in Rome near the church of St Bartholomew's he came back and founded his own St Bartholomew's. And that hospital has been there ever since on the same site and you can go and pray in the church that, that Rahair built what an amazing history, how much we owe in this country to the Christian tradition of health care. And just for all of us to remember that it is part of our Christian identity. To care for the sick, to have compassion for them. Not to be afraid of sickness in ourselves or in others. Yes, what a huge and heartbreaking burden it can be but how important it is for us to see Christ in the sick and for us to love as Christ loves and to see sickness as an opportunity should, to show the, lo the love of God in this world and to love with Christ's heart. Jesus cares for the sick. Second little thought here. Jesus works miracles again it's so obvious but don't forget it and it is possible to dismiss this I won't say easy many in the late 19th and the 20th centuries they tried to ignore or diminish the importance of the miracles in the Bible lots of good Christians wanted to see Jesus as a great man a teacher an inspiring leader and the miracles were a little bit embarrassing inconvenient but it's simply not possible historically with integrity to take this line. He is a teacher, but Jesus is also a miracle worker. It's central to what we know about him through the Gospels and through history. And it's central to what other people saw in him and to his public ministry. Jesus was, first of all, for many people, the miracle worker. And it's because of his miracles that people came to know him 
as the loving teacher and friend and leader. How consoling this is for us. His power to work miracles today and in our lives. To step in and to really touch our lives. I hope you've experienced his healing miraculous power maybe in very small ways. I hope sometime in your lives that you've prayed and something beautiful and powerful has happened in a way that it seemed to you in faith that it was a response to your prayer. I hope maybe that you have been stuck or desperate or in difficulties and help has arrived unexpectedly in a way that seemed to you to be more than a coincidence and full of meaning and to say something to you about God's special care for you. Or maybe that you are just now or in the past you have been conscious of God's love, of his power and full of gratitude for something he's done for you that you would say is very normal but actually it feels like a very special gift and you realise that behind this gift there is a loving and powerful giver. The ordinariness of life is meant to reveal not to obscure God's love and his power. Now some may say and the thought I'm sharing with you now is not my own original thought. Some might say, oh, well, all these prayers and these answers to prayers, they're just coincidences. Yeah? You pray, something happens, it's just a coincidence. Well, my reply, borrowed from someone else, is when I pray, coincidences seem to happen more often. Yeah? And draw what conclusion you want from that. But it's true. God is working powerfully all the time. We need to ask him more. We need to trust him more. And we need to recognise his work more. This is a lovely thought that G.K. Chesterton has, talking about fairy tales. Why do we like fairy tales? Because the miraculous, fabulous stories within a fairy tale help us to appreciate the ordinary miracles of everyday life that we have stopped seeing. The things that we used to wonder and marvel at, we've become bored of, haven't we? Disenchanted. And the point of a fairy tale is not to take us into a fantasy world, that's a little bit of it, but it's to help us to re-enchant our ordinary world. To be re-amazed. Chesterton gives the example of the fairy tale where someone discovers golden apples go growing on the tree and they are amazed. The miracle of a golden apple. But it's to help us to see the wonder that a child feels when they see their first apple hanging on a tree just there. Do you remember your first apple? Yeah, It should have amazed you. And I'm not making this up, it's just a nice coincidence. Yesterday I went to see my sister and her family. Um, I was late, so my niece is there in the, on the pavement in the street waiting for me. It's very heartwarming as an uncle to have your little niece waiting for you. She runs up to me, she grabs my hand, races down the street, comes to the front of her garden, and literally, I'm not exaggerating, she's jumping up and down and up and down, holding my hand in one hand, and with the other hand, she's pointing and chanting, daffodils, daffodils, Uncle Steve, daffodils. And I'm saying, uh, yes, daffodils. Yeah? And she's bouncing even higher, going, daffodils, daffodils. She's amazed. The wonder of a daffodil. The wonder of God's beauty and his goodness to us. The miracles, the big miracles of the blind man being healed today. And the little miracles of everyday life and the gift of God's goodness. And the last simple point from the gospel here. Jesus invites us to faith. Jesus invites us to faith. 
it's focused here on the blind man and the story of the blind man is so interesting because he has one small localized particular experience I say small he's healed but he has an experience and only over time and reflection and conversation and questioning and persecution through a long journey it happens very quickly but a long journey does he come to realize the significance of that experience and it brings him to a living faith in Jesus as the Messiah the Son of God at the end of the gospel story today so that he worships him and this is very often true for us that something particular happens to make you think it maybe just gives you pause for thought or it shakes you you're upset or you're amused or you wonder and something makes you step back a little bit and reflect on the bigger picture of your life of the universe and of its significance and that reflection then brings you back to the particular experience to see its deepest its truest significance that here the Lord was speaking to you was calling you it wasn't just a coincidence that there is a meaning here there is a depth and actually in this case for, for the blind man and for us here in the sanctuary looking at, a, at the crucifix behind me that when we look at the face of the man Jesus Christ we realize that we are seeing the face of God and when we see the work of Jesus in the gospel today we realize that we are seeing the work of God and this is what brings us to a step of faith faith is a gift and an experience and a commitment it's all of those things all of those things and the challenge is within the experience that we have to see the gift that is given in order to lead us to a commitment a decision a way of life do you see that pattern it's what happens to the blind man today an experience to be healed but he could have left it there remember those lepers that were healed yeah and nine of them just walked away so there was an experience but this blind man then reflected on that experience and wouldn't let it go because he knew there was something more important within it and over time and conversation and challenges and persecution he comes to realize that within that experience there is an amazing gift which is the love of Jesus Christ the healing power of God himself working through the Lord and inviting him not just to healing but to discipleship and to serve and follow him as his disciple I'll say it again because it's worth remembering within the experience of faith we need to discover the gift that God has given us in order to make the commitment to live that faith as we go forward experience gift commitment it's the pattern of the blind man it's the pattern of our catechumens here who will make their scrutinies and their promises today and it's the pattern I hope for each one of us